for Anna. Today on Tuesday news day, we have Firefly, Bafters, Stranger Things. Thank you. Castlevania. Castlevania and Firefly. Vikings. 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 <laughs> see you soon. So energetic. <laughs> wow. I'm a Viking, Ruben. Oh, okay. I'm a real Viking. <laughs> Tuesday news day. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, still in my head. How do I look? 90? Yeah, amazing. Okay, gaming news. Uh, For Honor is released today, so if you're thinking of getting your partner who is a gamer a gift that keeps on giving, then you'll probably want to get the creation of Ubisoft's uh, latest game, which is probably the way to go. We've had our hands on the beta and have played some of what the game has to offer. There are three types. Knight, Samurai and Vikings. Vikings are the best! <laughs> I personally thought I would favour the Samurai but ended up liking the sheer strength of the Knight. Check out our gameplay to see if this is up your partner's street or your, or your gaming street. Do have a look at the gameplay though, as the game starts around 49.99 RP and ends up going more near 79.99 uh, for the special editions. So we've added links below for your ease to find and buy. For Honor is available on Xbox One, PS4 and PC. Also in the world of games, or rather the Halo world. Woohoo! That's a terrible <laughs> line, sorry. Halo Wars 2 <laughs> comes out on Friday, February the 17th. If you don't know anything about Halo, uh, Halo Wars, we are looking to maybe, or maybe looking to get into this game. Here's a brief rundown of Halo Wars 2. It's a real-time strategy or RTS game developed by 343 Industries and Creative Assembly. The campaign mode is composed of 13 missions. The game sees the return of the UNSC crew aboard the warship Spirit of Fire, which sounds really cool. Yeah. It also introduces a new alien faction known as the Banished. Wow. Um, it will be available exclusively for Windows personal computers and Xbox One. Some exciting news for all of you gamers out there. For the first time, E3 is going to be available for you to go to. Up until now, it's only been industry professionals who were able to go. I've got a beard in my mouth. But if you can get your hands on a ticket, you will be able to go this year. Last year they had an event called E3 Live where you could go but not actually into the main event. They had fans outside and it was free. But this year you'll have to buy tickets. They were $150 for the first thousand tickets and then anything after that was $250. But they've been on sale since yesterday, so the chances of bagging the first thousand are probably well gone and potentially all the tickets are gone by now, by the time this video is released anyway. It is actually going to occur from the 13th to the 15th of June in Los Angeles and it is a really great sign that the industry is changing and that the gaming world is becoming more accessible to ordinary gaming folk like yourselves. Yeah, I mean we've been wanting to get to this for... Oh, well, well, I definitely have. And the fact that it's open to the public now is exciting, but also a little worrying because, you know, why are they having to do that? It's going to be packed. Mm. And, um, yeah, we're hoping that there will be some time for the, the people who actually work in the industry to have a chance to mooch about without it being packed full of Yeah, that would still be good if the industry professionals would be able to do that, yeah. as, as well as put the general public in as well. Yeah. Let us know if you're thinking of going, maybe, um, and um, what you are most looking forward to at E3. It looks like it's a, a combination between the general kind of um, conferences that you go to if you go to one as a public, member or industry professional hopefully it's got the best of both worlds yeah yeah do let us know what you think awesome. okay film and tv news that we've reached that part of the show where Yay. we talk about film and tv news what's this part of the show film and tv news yeah. starting with the biggest news of firefly now, for those of you that don't know about Joss Whedon's 14-episode masterpiece and the film tie-in Serenity, you will know that even the mention of the series will bring you sadness because of the show that never was, because of Fox. Aww. Yes, Fox, we all know cancelled it 11 years ago, and ever since the brown coats have been campaigning for more Goram gun-toting space adventure goodness. Well, now you might get that chance. Maybe, 
maybe? maybe? Fox have said that they want to revive the show, like they have revived other shows like 24, Prison Break, whether that's a good thing, I don't know. So many revivals. <laughs> Problem is, Joss Whedon, um, does Josh Whedon want to continue after being burned by them before? Will he trust them? I don't know. But Fox have said that they are on board if Mr. Whedon is on board. So, what do you think? Should Firefly come back? Has it been too long? Will it still have that script that made us fall in love with the career of Serenity in the first place? Comment below and let us know. Are you looking for that special Valentine's movie to watch? John Wick 2 is out at cinemas now! Yay! I'm really excited about this. It stars uh, Keanu Reeves once again returning to unwilling f unwillingly finish what he started in the first film. And if that's not a good enough reason for you to check it out, then how about Morpheus and Neo on screen for the first time together since The Matrix? That's amazing! How cool is that? Also, there, uh, right, so there is no spoon. No, not no spoon. There's no spoon. Oh. Sorry, I had to put a Matrix reference there somewhere. Yeah. But there is a dog, explosions, amazing fight scenes, and Neo once again kicking ass and taking names. That doesn't sound all bad. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Even, even without a spoon, I think that sounds worth watching. <laughs> even without a spoon. Even without a spoon. He does need a spoon. So he <laughs> can, so can bend it with his mind bowels. Yeah. Anyways, in the world of TV, what caught our attention this week was the release of the first episode of Legion. This is the first X-Men live action film. The series has eight episodes. I guess they are just checking out to see if uh, it has an audience. Now this series, if the pilot is anything to go by, is not for the kiddies. Not at all. Instead, they have taken a much darker tone and gone R rating, much like Logan and Deadpool. So here's some news if um, that might blow your mind about this series. Yeah. Scott Young, played by Dan Stevens, yeah. is Professor X's son. What? Well, uh, if they follow the comic, uh, comic lines anyway. Secure a love story in Egypt, skip some years, yada yada yada, and boom, you have someone who consider, who's considered to be one of the most powerful mutants ever. Anyway, Castlevania. That's right, another game is getting film treatment. What's that I hear people saying? What are people saying? No, not again. No. Well, okay, I should have said so Castlevania is getting the animation treatment and Netflix is doing it. Breathing a little easier now? Yes? No? Maybe? Well, here's how Netflix describes the show. Inspired by the classic video game series, Castlevania is a dark medieval fantasy following the latest surviving member of a disgraced Belmont clan trying to save Eastern Europe from the extinction of the hand of Vlad Dracula de Bay himself. <laughs> I don't know, I say Debe. Debe! Debe! Game adaptations have not had the, the best track record with many terrible films to show for it, like uh, Street Fighter, Double Dragon, and of course Super Mario Bros., which was terrible. Oh no. That being said, we have faith in Netflix, right? Right? I'm a little skeptical on this one, if I'm honest. But okay. They have faith in themselves. What did they say? <laughs> what Netflix said was most of the most. Of the, uh, well, well, well. Okay. Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. I'm not being all pro. Am I allowed to not be all pro? <laughs> You're allowed. Yeah, that, that's allowed. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> this is not a dictatorship, damn it. <laughs> most of the time, um, what Netflix do and produce as the original series is gold. Um, yeah. Most of the time, not most always. Uh, Netflix producer on Castlevania show says, I'm personally guaranteeing that this show is going to be the best bleeping video game adap adaptation ever made. So we hope he's right, I guess. Sounds confident. So, keeping it Netflix, we got some more Stranger Things news. It just wouldn't be Tuesday Newsday without some upside down news. We're so excited about it coming again in October for season two. Mm. Not only are we going to see Eleven's new hair, which is growing back all curly and beautiful, um, but also we're going to meet some new characters joining the show. Yeah. And Will is going to be rejoining the gang after his time in the Upside Down. He's going to be suffering from some kind of post-traumatic stress situation thing mm. and he's seeing visions, but are they real or not? We think they probably are, having seen um, his drawing of a spider monster come to life in the Super Bowl trailer. Um, so that's really exciting. Mm. We know the rift is still open between yeah. the Upside Down and our world, so we're going to see some new creatures mm. making their way through. Ah! 
And also there's some more characters joining. Max and her brother Billy are going to be joining the show. Max is going to make friends with the gang. Um, and she is going to be the love interest Ooh. for Lucas and Dustin. So it will be really interesting to see how that love triangle plays out. But her brother, Billy, is set to be a villain. Ooh. So that will be interesting too. Mm, I remember, um, actually I think it was Nerdist that referenced that when uh, the Duffer brothers talk about who they are influenced by. They influenced heavily by Stephen King. Yeah. And how Stephen King loves to put a real world emphasis on these bad guys. So making yeah. it a human bad guy who they sometimes get influenced by kind of supernatural entities, don't they? So I'm yeah. really looking forward to see what they do with this bad guy. That will be cool. Mm. Also, there's these, uh, there's a, a pet, a yeah. pet, a monster pet. Dustin's set to have a pet. He says that it's something that's not from this planet or dimension. But it's a cute little pet for him to be friends with. So that sounds cute or really dangerous. Um, it's set in 1984, which is the year the Gremlins film came out. Mm. So we're thinking maybe there's going to be a Gremlins reference yeah. there. So better be careful not to feed it after Knowing midnight. the Duffers, that this is that's probably accurate. They've probably yeah. done that on purpose. Yeah, don't feed the monster after midnight sort of thing. <laughs> I'm so excited to see where this is going to go because yeah. um, if they do do something, maybe there's new law uh, in Stranger Things world. If you do something, if you keep a pet, does it affect you? Will it grow? Will it mutate? Will it bring others? Uh, maybe you'll start seeing visions. Maybe it'll give you the ability to go into their world. How cool would that be? So exciting. Yeah. Upside down traveling. Vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not a nice place to go vacationing on. Yeah, yeah maybe I might pass on that one. <laughs> But yeah, that is our Tuesday Newsday news for Stranger Things. Yay. Yay. You've got your beard back. Hey! How did that happen? I just, I just grew it quickly. Oh, thanks for doing that. <laughs> okay, rounding off our TV and movies, we head back to awards season. Yes, the BAFTAs have just hey. happened. The British Academy Film Awards was hosted by Stephen Fry. Yes, that dude who's the narrator from the Little Big Planet series. For the most part, the award series was we were really pleased with because um, it had a variety, a variety of awards. The films, many different films, won the awards, which we were happy with, until the main event. La La Land won for cinematography, director, film, leading actress, original music, uh, and that's not right. Everything. I know. I don't even want to get started on that. Anyway. I think we can just cancel all of the awards. <laughs> Throw them at La La Land. Just give it to La La Land. There just you go. Take them all. Take them all. <laughs> we'll go home. But, 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 Kubo, uh, Kubo won for best animated film. Thank goodness La La Land didn't have an animated sequence. Hey. <laughs> uh, what was fantastic, though, was who they honoured for annual BAFTA fellowship. Mal Brooks, hey. who demonstrated he's still gutted at his ripe old age of 1500. <laughs> uh, uh, apologized to the Duke and Duchess for the American Revolution saying we were young. Um, of course, as with all the award ceremonies this year, there are there were a plethora of covert references to Trump and situations, the Trump situation. Yeah. And a failed attempt um, at a Theresa May, May joke. Oh, no one knows who she is. No. Who's she? <laughs> Obviously, the Americans are taking less interest in our Brexit drama. Um, <laughs> who is Theresa May? Let us know if you know. <laughs> yeah, pop <laughs> quiz. <laughs> That's all we have time for. Thank you for joining the Ruby Tuesday. Um, check out our other videos. We'll pop links here, 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 and here. <laughs> and uh, let us know what you think of For Honor if you are uh, getting it. Can we do the For Honor thing now? If you want this beard oh, and want to win it in a competition. <laughs> <laughs> are we giving my beard away? I don't know. Can I, can I wear it next week? I suppose. I like this bit. Okay. The teleprompter doesn't like my beard.